Reverend William Barber is leading the movement to fulfill the unfinished Poor People's Campaign. Reverend Barber. One writer has said in the recent books that movements are not cozy spaces for movement builders and leaders. And during the Southern Freedom Movement, white segregation has turned the landscape in the South into a bloody battleground and jails, balconies, and private homes and streets into sites of terror and killing fields. These were the realities of the people in the movement and what they faced, and Dr. King was no exception. The weight, the weight of these years by the time he got to Memphis to stand with black men who were organizing a garbage strike were heavy. By the time he got to Memphis, he had racists, moderates, politicians, a president, and even jealous criticism from black leaders who used his position against the Vietnam War as an excuse to diminish his status in the eyes of liberal white America while raising their own. And then the bullet rang and his body fell. Often we call Dr. King's last sermon the mountaintop sermon, but actually it wasn't. It was a call to action in the valley of poverty and racism. And he was dealing with racism and poverty and militarism when he stopped by Memphis to stand with garbage workers. He saw the connection between all three and knew that you could not address one without addressing the other. And that's why before he ever said anything about the mountaintop, he said, we must give ourselves to this struggle until the end, and nothing would be more tragic than for us to stop at this point. We, might, we must go up together or go down together. And what he said then is what we must do now. Nothing would be more tragic than for us to turn back now when the Voting Rights Act has been gutted and we have less voting rights today than we had in 1965. And for 1,745 days, the Congress has refused to fix the Voting Rights Act. 23 states have passed racist voter suppression laws. We have 140 million poor and working poor in this country, 62 million working poor people, 14 million children, and we lock people up who fight for 15 while we let corporate crooks go every day. Nothing would be more tragic than for us to turn back now. And right here in Memphis, Memphis, this majority black southern city, is the most impoverished metropolitan area in the nation. Nearly 20% of its residents living below the poverty line. The sanitation workers still don't have a living wage and guaranteed kinds of incomes and benefits. Nothing would be tr more tragic than for us to turn back now. Tennessee has 1.4 million poor people in it, mostly white, mostly women, mostly children, and the governor and the legislature have refused to pass living wage but have passed voter suppression. And you have some politicians who are so arrogant, they will stand on a stage and say they honor Dr. King while every day they dishonor him with policy. We have 37 million people without health care in America. 63 cents of every discretional dollar is going for war. Nothing would be more tragic than for us to be turned back now. We treat corporations like people and people like things. Corporations are allowed to poison our water, our air, and our land. And you can buy unleaded gas in Flint, Michigan, but you can't get unleaded water. Thousands of people die every day from policy, what Coretta Scott King called policy violence. Black people are shot in the street by police and, others, and, and many other people die from low wealth and low income. Nothing would be more tragic than for us now. So we must be the resurrection. When we face a time where even today, the president is talking about the military on the Mexican border. On the day we are honoring the general of nonviolence, nothing would be more tragic than for us to be turned back now. And so as I close, the Bible says, woe unto those who love the tombs of the prophet. You don't want to love the tomb of a prophet. The only way you can honor a prophetic leader and a prophetic movement is to reach down in the blood and pick up the baton, not just the baton of Martin, but of all the martyrs, black, white, brown, red, and yellow, and, and then carry that baton the rest of the way. We must declare as we come to this place 
that there is power in the blood. That is why thousands are coming together to launch 40 days from Mother's Day forward, a season of nonviolent fusion moral direct action, a season of voter mobilization, and a season of power building called the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for a moral revival. Who's joining? A woman whose daughter died in Alabama because Alabama refused to expand Medicaid. White women from Appalachia, chiefs from Ap the Apache Nation, Latino men and women from El Paso, men who are working, poor working, veterans of war, and people who are fighting for voting rights. The people are coming together to decide that we don't need another commemoration, we need a reconsecration. We don't need another remembrance. We need a moral revival in America. We don't need to just remember the blood. We need to reach down in the blood because there's power in the blood. And that's why Liz Theo Harris is here with me as the co-chair, because there's power in the blood. There's power when you stand on the shoulders of the martyrs. There's power when you refuse to go back. There's power when you won't turn around. There's power when you focus on love and truth and justice. And the truth is, even if one falls in one generation, we can pick it up in another generation. So let us declare that we are soldiers in the army. We've got to hold up the bloodstained banner and we've got to hold it up until we die. No matter what Trump does, hold it up. No matter what racists do, hold it up. No matter what injustice does, hold it up. We've got to hold it up until we die. We've got to hold it up until every vote is protected, until every person is respected, until every person has health care. We've got to hold it up until every child is lifted in love. We've got to hold it up until every job is a living wage job. We've got to hold it up until every person in poverty has guaranteed subsistence. We've got to hold it up until every black man or woman is free from being shot unarmed by the police. We've got to hold it up until every wall is ceased and every wall is torn down and every immigrant is welcome and every lying preacher that tries to pray for presidents while they are praying, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, on the poor and the hurting. We've got to hold it up, even if we have a narcissistic egomaniac in the White House. We've got to hold it up. We've got to hold it up. We've got to hold it up. That power, 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 power in the blue.